2024 has been an incredible year for open source AI. Stable Diffusion is probably the best example of generative AI that's entirely open and that has been built on top of for all sorts of things. We've seen advancements for SDXL. We've seen an endless number of fine tunes and modifications for all kinds of tooling to generate insanely realistic images and video. And now we're getting another update. So Stable Diffusion 3 promises a lot of things. And what's curious is a lot of this is kind of hidden. So this is by far the smallest update we've ever seen from Stable Diffusion. And of course, this is what they're now calling a early preview or a research preview. I want to get into what this model can really do. What's crazy is this model not only makes it possible to run on smaller GPUs with, with greater capability, but it also claims to actually do certain things that Sora from OpenAI can do, along with images, video, and 3D. Those are a few things we actually haven't seen in certain forms from stability AI. So I want to jump into this release, go into some tweets that Namad made, and tell you guys why I think this might be one of the biggest releases of the entire year, potentially even bigger than Google Gemini and what we saw last week. Welcome to AI Flux. Let's get into it. So I think it's important to note first, just of the size of Stable Diffusion 1.5 and Stable Diffusion XL. Stable Diffusion 1.5 was around 983 million parameters in size, and SDXL was right around 3.5 billion parameters in size. We know that for SDXL, you could basically run it on a 12 gig 3060. So why would Stable Diffusion 3 be better? There are a few different things. So basically, Imad says, today we're announcing Stable Diffusion 3 in early preview, our most capable text to image model with greatly improved performance in multi-subject prompts, image quality, and spelling abilities. So if you've tried to do text, we know that this is kind of a difficult thing to get right. One thing that I'm excited about is multi-subject prompts that involve text. So if you see here, there's the sign that says go, and then the sign on the bus that says dream on. And that's actually pretty hard to do even in Dolly 3 right now. And what's interesting is this announcement kind of includes a lot of the biggest upgrades, but we're going to go through it real quick anyway. So they say here, although the model isn't broadly available yet, today we're, op we're opening the waitlist for early preview. So definitely go sign up if you want to uh, be the first to get early access. I've been on the list for a little while and I'll link below if you guys want to. Now the technical details start to get pretty interesting. So they say here that the Stable Diffusion 3 suite of models currently range from 800 million parameters to 8 billion parameters. So 8 billion parameters is more than twice the size of SDXL, which is pretty interesting. This approach aims to align with our core values and democratize access, providing users with a variety of options for scalability and quality to best meet their creative needs. And creative needs in this case basically just means how many GPUs you have or how good your GPUs are. Stable Diffusion 3 combines a diffusion transformer architecture and flow matching, which is interesting because a lot of papers have been released recently on Archive and just shared on Hacker News that are showing the technical advantages of using a diffusion transformer architecture. So obviously most of this stuff is built on transformers the diffusion transformer architecture is kind of a next step. And we know it was actually used in OpenAI's Sora model. Flow matching is also pretty interesting, but I'm not going to get too far into that in this video. And what's cool is we know that they're going to be publishing a detailed technical report soon, so I'll probably do a video on that. Now, with any release of anything AI in 2024, of course, this comes with a safety announcement. So they obviously are going to say here, we believe in safe, responsible AI practices. This means we have taken and continue to take reasonable steps to prevent the misuse of Stable Diffusion 3 by bad actors. Now, what's interesting with this, especially compared to, for instance, how Google released their generative AI in Gemini 1.5, which now is actually turned off. They just disabled the feature this morning because they, it was built so poorly and improperly. But anyways, I think Stability AI is a curious case here because they've always been right on the edge the knife's edge of understanding what balance of safety works and what balance of safety is too restrictive or kind of a erasure of history level um, when it comes to telling users what they can and cannot make. Generally with Stability AI, if you dig deep enough, you can find booleans to disable and you can basically do whatever you want. But, you know, I think they have the best balance of any of these models going forward. Uh, if anyone used Dolly 3 early, you'll understand what having a lack of any safety was, but obviously Microsoft has now fixed that. The rest of this is really just safety talk. It's nothing that we haven't seen before. And in the end, they say here they want to en enable humanity's potential with AI. And the only bit I think that's important here in the end is that if you want to get the earliest access to Stable Diffusion 3 when it's released, they recommend going to their website and getting a Stability AI membership. And obviously this makes sense because when you pay for the membership, it's giving them more money to uh, borrow against to get more GPUs, which in theory, you know, isn't the worst thing. So how did the Stability AI pull this off? I've been talking to a few developers from Stability AI. And what's curious is 
In terms of resources and headcount, they are, have about a hundredth of the resources of OpenAI and really close to a thousandth of what's available at Google, both in terms of just mind share and money just to rent GPUs. And what's crazy is they're still achieving immense progress. I would argue that stable diffusion in certain cases is even better than products Google has released. Now the release is interesting, but Imad spilled some more details on Twitter. So he puts here some notes. So he says this uses a new type of diffusion transformer, again, which was used in Sora or is similar to Sora combined with flow matching and other improvements. Hopefully in that technical report, we'll see what those other improvements are. He says here, this takes advantage of transformer improvements and can not only scale further, but can accept multimodal inputs. So this is something we have not seen prior. Uh, we've seen image to image, but multimodal inputs are very different um, and in their own kind of category. What's also cool is, you know, they're more open about why they're doing this release. They probably have stronger requirements for who they're giving it to. And what I found most juicy is he says it, this will launch with a full ecosystem of tools. So that might just be their kind of web UI for this. It also could mean some other tooling that they release on day one. What's also really interesting is he says it's a, it's a new base taking advantage of the latest hardware and comes in all sizes. The biggest one, and this is really the biggest detail here that I can't believe they didn't mention in their actual announcement, is that it enables video, 3D, and more. So previously, you know, Stable Diffusion and Stable Diffusion Video were two separate models, and it looks like that's coming together into one. And in terms of text to 3D or text to Nerf, which I believe is a big reason why Sora is so good and why it looks like you're kind of floating through a Nerf sometimes, text to 3D in this will also be incredible. And it'll also be cool to see probably the first model that's tried to replicate what Sora has done or gotten close to that level of quality. And as always with any of these projects, uh, need more GPUs. So, uh, and I think I can relate to that as well. There were also some people who asked, you know, how would it perform with a 3090 or a 4090? And Imad's basic reasoning here is, well, we have a bunch of different versions of the model. It'll be curious to see if the 8 billion parameter version of this just becomes the equivalent of, you know, will it run crisis in terms of uh, melting GPUs? And what's also interesting is someone asks, can we create videos similar like Sora? And Ahmad again says, given enough GPUs and good data, yes. Which of course this applies to training the model, but we will see. So if you have a GPU, you want to donate to Stability AI, maybe ping Ahmad on Twitter. He's very active there. And there's a lot we'll have to see with this model. Obviously this is just what they're telling us it can do and it'll be very interesting to see what happens. So do you think uh, someone will manage to port this to unstable diffusion, like every version before has been pushed? Do you think it's really gonna be better than SDXL? Will it actually perform nearly as well as Sora? Let me know down in the comments, guys. I'm curious what your uh, current configurations for running stable diffusion are as well. I was just using a single 4090 for a while. I think stable diffusion is one of the most exciting projects in this entire space. And we'll just have to wait and see when they give us something or when one of these PhDs gets a little tired and shares something to GitHub by accident. We'll have to just see what happens. So as always, I hope you learned something. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you in the next one.